2018 is sponsored by Wisconsin Hospital Association, Wisconsin Counties Association, Wisconsin Realtors Association, Marshfield Clinic Health System, AARP Wisconsin, and Campaign 2018 partner Milwaukee Journal Sentinel. Republican Representative John Spiros of Marathon is seeking re-election in the 86th Assembly District. The election is November 6th. Representative, welcome back to Wisconsin. Thank Island. you very much, Steve. Appreciate it. Uh, I, interviewed you, I interviewed you before the primary. Yes. Congratulations on your win. Thank you very much. Um, now, since then, let's, let's come back to transportation because okay. I'm hearing more people saying, which I think you told me in our pre-primary interview, is there more interest in diverting the money, the money from auto sales and uh, car repairs that now goes to the general fund, is there more interest in that going to the transportation fund? Are you picking up on this? Well, that was my, that was my amendment, if you, if you recall. Right. It was Governor Walker's amendment when he was in the assembly and it never got done. Right. Uh, I've not heard a whole lot, so maybe you're hearing more than me, but well, I, I think just it's- just had two candidates today They talked it. about it. Well, I think it's a great Senator idea. Senator Petrowski <laughs> is one of them. <laughs> That's uh, great. I think and Senator Petrowski either is or was chairman of transportation. He's chairman of transportation, and right now I am chairman of transportation in the assembly as well as as chairman of criminal justice. So I have a dual chairmanship because uh, Representative Rip moved on into yes, the administration. Into in the administration. Yeah. Well, are you sensing momentum building for the idea of diverting sales taxes that now go to the general fund, to the transportation fund, as opposed to raising taxes, which I think you told me in July you don't <laughs> want any part of? Well, I don't want any part of it. And, and the reason being is, uh, first of all, let me answer your first part of the question. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'm hopeful that there is momentum because I think that's a good way to move money into the transportation fund that's not there right now. Right. It's something that's sustainable too because people have to get their vehicles repaired, get an oil change, get tires, get windshield wipers, you know, things like that, get car washes. So it's just those things that pertain to the vehicles. Uh, talking about a fuel tax increase, you know, I, I keep hearing about five cents or 10 cents or whatever else. In a year, the taxes now on fuel tax have gone up. I mean, well, the cost of a gallon of gas today is 41 cents higher than it was a year ago. Mm -hmm. Add five cents to that, and it's not just small, small pennies like it was before. Uh, when you talk about five cents, it's not a whole, whole lot of money, but when it comes down to it, when you're talking about 45 cents or 50 cents on the gallon, and someone's driving, you know, something that uh, 20 gallons they got to fill up. I mean, and they're filling it up every week or every other week. I mean, it's there's costs there. So, from my standpoint, I think as we move into the next session and we move into the joint finance, into the budget, and we talk about transportation, we've got to talk about other things that are on the table. But I like my idea of moving money from general fund into the transportation fund that is solely dealing with automobiles. When you brought this up in caucus, was it questioned by other members of the caucus who said yes, but that would provide less general fund money for school aids and Medicaid, the UW system, shared revenue, and our prison system. So I didn't hear from anybody on that. I didn't, didn't hear any negatives. I you mean, didn't hear any negatives. You know, what you have to remember, too, is you have to look at where the economy is today in Wisconsin. Unemployment's down to the lowest level. Employment's up at the highest level. We have Foxconn coming. We have other things that are happening in our area that are just great. The economy is boosting and booming, so revenues, our revenues are in the black. You know, if you look at it from what we've done on revenues, we had the highest amount of money we put in education ever this last session. And as, as we move forward, uh, the governor, we just, uh, we had a, we had a, we were in the black, so the governor decided, hey, I'd like to see that we have a uh, tax-free holiday. We mm -hmm. did that. Yeah. And then to give money back to those who had children, $100, and that we did that. So there's... There's that money that went to those that typically that has to go back into revenue. It's there already in revenue. So from my standpoint, I'm hopeful. And what I see in business, and you know I'm in business too full time besides this, and I see what's happening, and the economy is good right now. 
Uh, I see things plowing ahead, and, and everybody's continuing to say that things are going to move in this direction, which is a good thing. It's a good thing for all of us. Now, you do you still work for a trucking company? I do. Yep. And the trucking industry is opposed to tolling, correct? Well, they're opposed to tolling. They are. Okay. Um, well, the polls show that it's pretty even between Tony Evers and Governor Walker. Mm. If Tony Evers is elected, and but you come back as the chairman of Assembly Transportation, when 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 then potentially Governor Evers says everything is on the table, what's going to be your response in that dialogue? Well, it's it's the same response I've had throughout. I haven't changed the response. I haven't gone off off this this way or that way. I think everything is on the table. Uh, I'm not a big fan of tolls myself, and, and I think when you look at it. When it comes down to it, there's a number of people that basically say, "I'm okay with tolling, but they don't leave the state. Right. You know, they don't they don't transit from from point to point. Good point. And, and it's an area that it's not easy recoverable from a standpoint of transportation. You can't just add it into the rate. Fuel tax, you know, we're, trucking is already paying that. And if that fuel tax goes up, then it's across the board. Uh, plus, they haven't shown where tolling has actually worked from the standpoint that you've been able to take care of all those things that you think that you can take care of with tolling. Plus, it's not that simple. I mean, you're talking about taking it from 94 all the way to 94 to the end, um, and that's a, that, that's a lot of infrastructure that you have to put in. This isn't something that you can do tomorrow and say, all right, let's start tolling. And plus, you can't just put it on the border and say, let's toll just those people coming in from Illinois. Uh, I've heard that before too, and it's like those, a lot of those people are going up north, spending money on tourism and everything else. They have a home, I mean, they're paying taxes here in the state already. So, you know, from my standpoint, things are on the table. So, no matter, you know, I'm hopeful uh, Governor Walker remains, uh, and and I like where he goes with a lot of different things. But if it's the other way, then you know things are on the table. But I don't change from what, what I've said before. And these are things that I'm hearing from the district. I mean, this isn't just John Spiro saying this is this or from a trucking industry saying, hey, we like this or don't like this. Uh, the trucking industry as, as a whole throughout the United States is not a big fan of tolling. So, you know, just, just to, to be fair, uh, it's not just, just a, you know, a carrier here or there. I understand. The, um, you mentioned Foxconn. Uh, you voted for that. Um, that leads Kimberly Clark yep. to wanting some of the same tax breaks. The Senate will maybe vote in, in November. Uh, you, do you hope that Assembly Pass Bill passed uh, the, uh, on Kimberly Clark? You hope it passes the Senate and becomes law? Well, I'm hopeful that Kimberly Clark, Clark stays. So, you know, from my standpoint, it's, it's keeping businesses here, especially businesses that have been with us here in Wisconsin for a long time. Uh, they're a mainstay. We'd li I'd like to see them stay. Uh, there's a number of great paying jobs there, and I think that's the key that, uh, that we, we fight for. And you mentioned school aids and the big increase in the current state budget. Yep. Uh, I think I asked you this in July, so I, I'll ask it again. When local school officials say, thank you very much for the big increase, we need another big increase, how well funded are our public schools? And I have to say that I have to go back to the revenue. You know, where, where, where are we at with revenue? What revenue is coming in and what's going to be in the proposed budget? As you know, the governor proposes the budget, it comes out, we take a look at it, and then we work with the governor, we work with those offices, we, we talk about what we need to do, what we can do, mm -hmm. uh, and then we have to make sure that everything else is taken care of. So from a legislative standpoint, it's not just looking at, at this particular item or this particular item, you have to look at it all. So. Let's go back over your position on levy limits. Should they yeah. stay in place to control property taxes? Well, I, you know, I was in the city council here in Marshfield. I yep. was in the city council for eight years. Yep. We dealt with levy limits. I think I told you even at that time we looked internal uh, to see what we can do. I mean, bottom line is I think it's, it's like anything else from a business standpoint. You look internally, you look at what you can cut, you look at what you can spend, and that's what you spend. The, the, the issue with levy limits, is it's not that simple just to turn it on and say, all right, now everybody, you know, we're going to go to this formula or that formula. Uh, it's not that simple. So from my standpoint, at, at this point, I, I think we have a good, good program in place. Uh, if we need to do some other things from, from our uh, municipalities, we can always look at those. When we were talking about K-12, I should have asked you this. The voucher, the choice program, should it expand further? 
Are you happy where it is? Uh, you know, I I was happy. Yeah, I I basically voted for the budget a few years ago that ended ended up expanding choice Re throughout. We're seeing and now statewide. Right, and uh, you know I, I hold to that. I mean I think that what I like about the choice program is it gives those parents and those families and those children an opportunity that they wouldn't normally have. So for me, it's about that child. It's about growing up having a great education. So. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm for where we're at, and if we need to expand a little bit beyond that, we can look at it. Right now, I think the, it's they can go wherever they need to, but I like the opportunity of, of children having that choice and parents having that choice. And the um, the Department of Corrections budget, yeah. you know, Green Bay and Waupun built in the 1800s. Yeah. You heard some Democratic candidates for governor say if we had if we changed uh, more emphasis on rehab, we could potentially cut the uh, prison inmate population by half. Governor Tommy Thompson has said that. Mm -hmm. But do we need a new state prison? You know, uh, you asked me this before. I and, did. And it's, it's interesting because I, I drove past Green Bay not too long ago, and you talk about uh, something that was in a, should be in a movie from the 20s or 1910s. <laughs> That's what it looks like. Uh, I would be for looking at a new prison and then basically tearing one of those down. Uh, not, base, not, not having just a new prison to house more... Uh, uh, more prisoners. I, I think that we can do things a little bit better, more efficient. I just spent some time at NCSL out in Oregon and went through some of the programs that they have uh, with criminal justice reform and what they've done there and all their alternative programs. You know, we have alternative programs here in the state. We have them in Wausau when it comes down to uh, drug abuse and things like that. Uh, treatment alternatives, TAD programs. Uh, so, you know, from my standpoint, if we can do more with that, I'm for it, but I'm not for, I've heard before that, well, if we can release 50% and you can't just let people who've committed murder, sexual assault, assaults, aggravated assaults, burglaries that are, you know, aggravated, uh, just let them onto the street. Uh, I think that there has to be, you have to, you have to look at it from the, the right approach. Healthcare. Are you hearing from hospitals and nursing homes and medical professionals that our Medicaid reimbursement rates are so low we may be at a tipping point that threatens the quality of health care under our MA program? You think we're at a tipping point or is that overstating it? Uh, I don't know whether we're at a tipping point. I mean, I'm not. I think like any other program, if you can sit down and you can say, hey, I need this or need that, everybody's going to need. I mean, you know, at budget time, uh, it's like the beginning of the year, everybody comes in and they're asking for this, asking for that. Yep. Uh, I don't think this is any different than ask. I mean, if, if we can get a little bit more, there's a lot of other areas and other needs too besides this. Uh, but you know, I've not heard that as far as we're at a tipping point. Uh, I think we're, you know, right now, we're, we're, I think it's a good program. I think it's where it needs to be. I, I've seen people talk about expansion of Badger Care. For me, I'd like to get people off of Badger Care mm -hmm. and get them back into uh, to working and doing other things like we've done. Uh, but uh, you know, again, that's that's finding that proper job and getting people uh, to where they feel good and comfortable about working again. Have you followed the pilot program between state government and Delta Dental that pays for dental care for low income in some of these regional clinics? Has that? Uh, do you have any clinics in your district? We do. I think the Marshfield Clinic has has a setup here. Should that be a priority in the next MA budget? I I would agree with that from a standpoint of children and dental care because that that's a definitely an issue as children get older without proper dental care. Okay, um, the UW system budget. Should we continue the tuition freeze? You know, right now I think uh, a student has saved six thousand dollars since we've instituted this. Uh, if we can continue to do that and keep those savings, and for me, it probably would allow more children to uh, to get involved in, in college, you know, from the standpoint of UW, uh, I, I don't think it's a bad thing. But I think it all comes back to the budgets and then taking a look at UW where they stand as well. One of the issues that we're having here, even though through the consol consolidation mm -hmm. between like Marshfield and Marathon, Stevens Point, Stevens Point's enrollment is way down. So they, I mean, right now they're in a point to where their budget should be here, but it's here because of the enrollment. So I think all those things need to be taken a look at. What's the issue? 
uh, for the enrollment coming down and what needs to be done. Now, is that more students that are going to two-year colleges or one year getting a certificate and going into you know, a job? Because right now, you can get a great job just getting a certificate, going through a tech school, and coming out with a great paying job. So, you know, the four-year colleges that we've always talked about since I was young, you know, hey, you gotta get a four-year degree and everything else, right. I think it's really changed today. So, I think the four-year colleges have to look at that too and change and, and go along with that. As you campaign, are you hearing about an issue from caregivers? AARP estimates that 578,000 Wisconsin residents provide care for a loved one or a neighbor, something like that? Would, would you support laws or rules that require hospitals to recognize and work with caregivers when someone they love is hospitalized? Has this issue come up, John? It has not. I, I, it's not one of those things I've heard. Uh, I've heard from people at the doors. Uh, so I, haven't, I mean, I, I, I wish I had more information on it, but I don't. I've not heard. It's not, not one of those things people are talking to me about. Um, some local governments have scheduled refer advisory referendums on legalizing recreational and medical marijuana. Give me your positions on that again. <laughs> you know, uh, it, it's interesting that the uh, Attorney General, uh, the Congressman Sean Duffy, had a uh, forum here, along with the sheriff, sheriffs from all the area, uh, back, I think it was last spring. It was either last spring, could have been last year. Uh, you know, you lose track. Uh, but there was individuals there that said marijuana is a gateway drug into other drugs. If you take a look at our district, uh, Marathon County has a high drug issue, uh, which is a concern. And for me, that's one of the issues I have. But the other issue too is, I was in law enforcement, and being in law enforcement, from a DUI standpoint, you can do a breathalyzer on that individual and know right then whether that individual's greater than, and at, at when I was in law enforcement was 0.10, today yep. it's 0 .008. 0 0.08. But you know, from, from a drug standpoint, from drugs in the system, that's blood. And you basically have to have, uh, you know, writ from the court to be able, be able to draw blood. You have to have something from them, from a judge to basically say you can do that. So that's one of the issues. It's, it's the control, it's the enforcement. And, and, and I think there's some issues there. I was just, when I was out in uh, Oregon, it's interesting because that's a state that legalized marijuana, mm -hmm. but that's a state that also their unemployment is more than double ours. I mean, our unemployment's low. I was surprised. 2.8, yeah. Ours is 2.8, theirs is 5. Point, I think it's 5.6 or 5.7 or 8, which I was surprised. Uh, and then there's other issues there too. It's just like a lot of homeless and you can't afford property, you, you know. And it's a state that doesn't have a sales tax. So uh, to me, it's, it's like something, this definitely didn't help from the standpoint if it was supposed to help the economy, was supposed to put, you know, put money into different places, I haven't seen that benefit. So if there's a benefit there, I, I think there has to be an enforcement side and, and look at it from that standpoint. But at this point, we don't have that. So that's where in I stand. In July, I asked you about differences with your primary yeah. opponent, moving on, your differences between your general election opponent. Well, you know, I've gone up against Nancy. This is the third time. Uh, Michael, this is the second time. They're both nice uh, individuals. You know, my background uh, in law enforcement, my background as a veteran, uh, you know, I have eight years in the city council of Marshfield. I have six years now in the state. Uh, I think what I've done and what I've accomplished has been, has been good for the district. I've not heard from people. Every once in a while you hear from that small pocket that they just don't like you or they don't like something here or there. But for the most part, I hear from people and, and it's very positive. So, you know, I think that uh, I'd like to continue on where we've been. Uh, one, I just leave you with one bill, you know, the bill on CPR for schools mm -hmm. and how hard I worked last time to make sure that the CPR 911 got passed, where most people would think that that dispatcher would understand CPR and they, it's not a rule. So we had to end up putting that into legislation. So to me, those are things that are going to save lives, have in immediate impact, but those are things we need to do. Those are things that I can basically put my name on and, and feel good about. Republican Representative John Spiros of Marathon is seeking re-election in the 86th Assembly District. The election is November 6th. John, thanks for visiting again with Wisconsin Eye. Thank you for inviting me back. Thanks. I appreciate it. Campaign 2018 is sponsored by Wisconsin Hospital Association, Wisconsin Counties Association, 
Wisconsin Realtors Association, Marshfield Clinic Health System, AARP Wisconsin, and Campaign 2018 Partner Milwaukee Journal Sentinel.